This is unbelievable. Following Blue Origin, ULA has now filed a lawsuit against the FAA to block SpaceX's Starship Florida plan, citing concerns not only about environmental impacts, but also questioning Starship's ability to reach the Moon and Mars. It's ironic that a company grappling with rocket launch and financial challenges is casting doubt on SpaceX's capabilities. What exactly did ULA highlight? What are their intentions behind this move? And how will SpaceX counter these criticisms and demonstrate their capabilities? Join us today on Great SpaceX as we dive deep into these questions. Challenges in development are a given for any organization, and SpaceX is no exception. Ironically, their toughest hurdles often arise from their competitors. Just recently, Blue Origin sparked controversy with their commentary aimed at restricting Starship operations in Florida. Not long after, another SpaceX rival, ULA, joined the fray. ULA CEO Tori Bruno recently penned a comprehensive 22-page critique highlighting numerous issues with the FAA's Starship Florida Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS for short, and SpaceX's plans. Beyond environmental concerns and impacts on local systems in Florida, ULA also emphasized perceived limitations of Starship that could hinder SpaceX's ambitious goals of reaching the Moon and Mars. Specifically, Section 2 of ULA's comment article highlights two main issues. First, concerning Starship's progress, ULA states, as a threshold matter, the EIS must acknowledge that Starship is still in its experimental stages and that SpaceX's planned operations at LC-39A have evolved and continue to evolve. Starship is the largest rocket ever built and it is currently tested at SpaceX's private base in Boca Chica, Texas. In prior test flights, SpaceX has experienced several technical accidents. Next, addressing Starship's capabilities, ULA added, SpaceX has acknowledged that the vehicle is not meeting anticipated performance levels. As a result, SpaceX plans to increase the size and thrust levels of the vehicle stages to address this performance shortfall. This would result in environmental and safety issues greater than those witnessed at Boca Chica. Then, ULA extends the problem to the Starship plan in Florida. SpaceX intends to launch a much larger model at LC-39A than it is currently testing in Boca Chica. In April of 2024, SpaceX revealed plans to, at minimum, quadruple payload capability to make up for shortfalls in predicted performance. Starship will eventually be 492 feet tall, roughly 20% higher than the current massive system aboard the Super Heavy rocket. The Super Heavy booster is expected to hold up to 4,100 metric tons of propellant, and Starship up to 2,600 metric tons. The maximum liftoff thrust is anticipated at 103 meganewtons. The resulting launch impacts would far exceed current impacts seen during Boca Chica launches. Additional growth of the Starship launch vehicle may be planned if performance continues to fall below expectations. And in conclusion, ULA emphasized, given these changes, the EIS must perform a comparative analysis between current usage impacts and the proposed operations with a rocket proposed to be more than double the size of any currently licensed launch vehicle and with increased frequency of launches. Not only ULA, but many analyses also expressed skepticism regarding SpaceX, Starship, and Artemis 3. Recently, NASA's assessment of Artemis 3's schedule estimated a 1 in 3 chance of a delay of up to 1 and a half years, potentially pushing the mission to February of 2028. This estimate stems from a confirmation review conducted late last year, which set a scheduled baseline of February 2028 for the project with a 70% joint confidence level. This indicates a high probability that Artemis 3 will not be ready before February of that year. These estimates pertain specifically to the Starship HLS without considering other aspects such as SLS, Orion spacecraft, and the new lunar spacesuit. Not only estimates, but many analyses also point out Starship's problems. Firstly, Elon Musk's April presentation revealed that by V2, or version 2, Starship will reach more than 100 tons, while the current version likely falls short of that mark. This shortfall makes it challenging to achieve the capabilities needed to colonize Mars. 
Starship V3 promises a 200-ton capacity, but its application timeline remains unclear. The second problem is the complexity of the refueling system. With the current payload capacity, consumption rates, and energy evaporation, estimates suggest that approximately 16 flights would be needed to resupply Starship HLS. Even with V3 boasting 4,050 tons of fuel in the booster and 2,300 tons in the ship, the number of missions required is still up to 8 flights. This number would be even higher for a Mars mission. Covering these needs with Starship's current ground systems is a formidable challenge. Additionally, SpaceX has yet to master this refueling method, with tests scheduled for no earlier than early next year. But to be fair, ULA appears focused solely on current challenges without considering Starship's future advancements and capabilities. Before we get into that, I encourage you to like the video, share it, and subscribe to our channel to support our ongoing development. Regarding the NASA estimates mentioned earlier, the agency maintains confidence in the September 2026 schedule, stating, NASA continues to have confidence in SpaceX as a provider to help achieve the Artemis III mission. Indeed, there are numerous reasons to support NASA's confidence. Last year, NASA and SpaceX conducted crucial tests with the elevator system. In 2024, they continued to test astronauts' activities with spacesuits underwater to simulate the lunar environment. In April, the two agencies performed a full-scale test with the simulated HLS system while astronauts wore spacesuits. Meanwhile, on the ground, SpaceX is making significant improvements to the infrastructure at Starbase. This includes promoting the construction of a new launch tower, expanding and applying new test systems, and enhancing fuel systems. The new production facility, Star Factory, is also set to become operational soon. This year, we will see the first V2 prototypes emerge from this factory. In Florida, the new tower has been under construction for some time. The recent EIS has revealed many potential plans, such as developing Starship V3, completing the launch system, building a catch tower, and landing on drone ships. Regarding the overall progress, SpaceX is also aiming to complete the Starship stage catching attempts this year. Next year, they will test the ship-to-ship -ship refueling system after having completed the tank-to-tank -tank test in Flight 3. Turning back to ULA, their common article clearly reveals their true intentions. It's quite transparent. Much like Blue Origin, ULA is attempting to slow down SpaceX's development. We all know that to achieve the Moon or Mars goals, Starship will need to launch frequently to ensure reliability. However, this progress risks overshadowing other rockets like Vulcan and New Glenn. Bruno, in response to staff writer Christian Davenport's tweet about ULA and Blue Origin's comments, said, I'd prefer not to shut down SLC-41. This statement clearly indicates the company's apprehension regarding the development of Starship. Looking back at Vulcan's progress, ULA's analysis reveals its own vulnerabilities. Despite a successful debut earlier this year, ULA's rocket is currently encountering numerous scheduling issues stemming from challenges in customer and payload selection. Moreover, the prolonged delays of Vulcan over the years have incurred substantial financial losses, potentially positioning the company for acquisition by new owners. Technologically, ULA's rockets have also faced significant challenges. Last year, Vulcan experienced leaks in its Centaur second stage, a problem that also surfaced during the recent Starliner CFT-1 mission with the Atlas rocket's Centaur stage. In terms of capabilities, ULA's rockets do not measure up to Starship. For instance, Vulcan stands at a height of only 67.3 meters with a diameter of 5.4, capable of delivering approximately 27.0 tons to low Earth orbit and around 12.1 tons for translunar injection payloads. These figures place Vulcan roughly on par with Falcon 9 and below Falcon Heavy's capabilities. Therefore, criticism of Starship's capabilities from ULA appears somewhat laughable, given these comparative metrics. Reflecting on ULA's criticism, they contend that criticism they contend that SpaceX's rocket cannot meet its schedule. However, as SpaceX pushes forward with the Starship Florida plans and advances Starship V3, ULA stands out as a major obstacle to these efforts. When considering ULA's capabilities for projects like Artemis or Mars colonization, their track record does not inspire confidence. Whether it's government or military payload launch markets, Vulcan has led ULA to lose market share to SpaceX. 
This raises questions about ULA's suitability for larger goals. In response to recent criticisms from Blue Origin and ULA, Jared Isaacman remarked on Twitter, I would think ULA and Blue Origin should spend more time on their product and capabilities. Isaacman is an American entrepreneur, pilot, philanthropist, and commercial astronaut. He's the founder and CEO of Shift4 Payments, a payment processing company, and the founder of Draken International, a private Air Force provider. Isaacman is also known for his space tourism endeavors, having commanded the Inspiration4 mission, the first all-civilian spaceflight to orbit Earth, which launched on September 16th of 2021 aboard SpaceX's crew Dragon Resilience. Additionally, he is set to command the Polaris Dawn mission, part of a series of missions named the Polaris Program. Isaacman is recognized for his philanthropic efforts, including a significant donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital as part of the Inspiration4 mission. If you agree with his statement, please respond with yes in the comment section down below. In the meantime, SpaceX is tackling the many challenges on the road to the Moon and Mars, and they're doing it better than anyone else. Unlike ULA or Blue Origin who often criticize, SpaceX is making real progress. Let's rally behind SpaceX and achieve those monumental goals together. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.